Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Gomolka, Oxygen.com correspondent, and as promised, our live coverage continues here at, at CrimeCon, and we're joined with more people that were featured in Oxygen's Murder for Hire series. We have a former undercover agent, Javier Duran, here, and also the prosecutors who worked on a case here out in Houston, Samantha Connect and Cameron Callaghan. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, you know, Javier, I want to start with you. How do you mentally prepare yourself to go undercover in a case like this? Well, there's, uh, it's definitely something you, you just have to get into your mind. I mean, you, you have to know that it's, it's a job, so you prepare for it. Of course, you train for it, mm -hmm. and uh, depending on what role you're playing, you're, you might study for it the night before, prepare yourself. Um, it's something that, and you also have to have a, a natural ability to do as well. Yeah, in terms of the training, is it, you know, coming up with a personality, a backstory, and something like that? Yeah, as far as the training goes, I mean, there's a lot of training that uh, comes with working undercover. Uh, when it comes to uh, what personality you're going to be adopting, you uh, you might you might check online or you might check with uh, you know personal friends that uh, have that specific background you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Was there something that you applied uh, it, from your personality into this case that you wanted to have? My personal personality. Well, this this case was kind of easy. I was playing a member of the military, which we, uh, police organizations. We, we are paramilitary, so we use a lot of the same vocabulary as the military. So I, I used some of my police, um, you know, my police training and experience mm -hmm. for this specific role. Right. Um, we could see people coming out now. There's a lot of energy in this room. Sam, uh, Samantha, and Cameron. I want to ask you, what was the most difficult part of prosecuting this case? Um, I think the most difficult part about this case was just making sure that we were able to get the point across to the jury about what he intended. Um, in this case, with all the videos and um, audio statements, he never actually said the words, I want you to kill her. And so we needed to make sure that the jury understood what his intent was and why he was saying the things he was saying. Right. And so I know you both still work in the Houston area. Is this case kind of an outlier or have you seen and worked on more murder for hire type cases? Well, I think this case is an outlier for the both of us in the respect that it involved two potential victims. Uh, I don't think either one of us has worked on, we've worked on similar cases, but nothing that involved two different suspects wanting two different victims to be killed. Mm -hmm. What do you think, because there was this video in this case, which seems to be um, pretty unique in, in getting that kind of video with the help of an undercover agent, but what do you think was the most compelling piece of that evidence, or was it something else that wasn't the video in this case? I, I think definitely the most compelling piece of evidence were all the tapes. Um, allowing the jury to be able to feel like they were actually there and present when the conversations took place was a real powerful tool that we were able to use to our advantage. Mm -hmm. Is there a collaboration between prosecutors and an undercover agent when you're approaching a murder for hire case? There is. Uh, we, we are informed about, usually the way it works is we are informed by the agency that gets wind of it or it's reported to about what's going on and we work hand in hand with what was where Javier was assigned before the Major Offenders Division of the Houston Police Department in coming up with a game plan how to go forward. I mean, obviously, we're concerned about gathering the evidence we need. They're concerned about running an operation, a safe operation, where they can collect the evidence, but most importantly, keep their officers safe. Right. So, Javier, for this case, you were tasked with getting that video. Was that, like, the goal of, I got to go in and get this video? Yes. Uh, specific, specifically, this case, uh, the video was very important, so we knew everything had to be recorded uh, at the very least with the audio so uh, yeah we knew video was going to be important it's going to play a big part in uh, what the jury decided mm -hmm. is there ever a fear of you know they're going to know i'm undercover or you yeah. know i'm going to get found out because of x y or z yeah there's always a fear when when, when you're an undercover officer you always think uh, you know oh this guy knows or they know and it, you know you always think that oh the, they know I'm following them, they know I'm watching them, but you have to get that out of, you know, out of the back of your mind. Just get it out of your mind and, yeah. and uh, do your job. Yeah. How did you get Leon, Jacob, and um, Valerie McDaniel to trust you in this case? I think just, well, first of all, it was very important that uh, the CI that we used, it was important that he sold me to them and um, they trusted him, so I needed, I needed them to, uh, to trust me as well. So the way that, the way that I did it was I, I, I was trying to get a bond with Leon a little bit. I was trying to bond with him, trying to talk to him on a friend level. And um, I mean, that's 
That's pretty much it. It, it moved really fast, so I, I didn't have as much time as I wanted. Um, but typically, if it was a longer case, uh, you, you make bond with, um, with suspects by going out to eat with them, going out to drink with them, hanging out with them. You know, not, not really trying to gather evidence, but just hanging out with them. to try to make them your friends. And Javier with a beard was a much more convincing kid man. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Got to add in the detail. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm excited for more people to hear your story at the panel and Megan's story as well. But for those of you sitting at home, you can hear more about their story in Oxygen series, Murder for Hire. We'll have more live coverage throughout the weekend at CrimeCon. But around 4 p.m. Central Time, we'll have our live interview with Nancy Grace ahead of